hello students so let's start here the next chapter that is unit 5 and in this unit we're going to learn about the forest resources of india so the forest resources of india we're going to learn in the fifth unit so what do you mean by forest now forest is an area of land which is covered with trees right which is completely covered with trees trees and undergrowth what do you mean by undergrowth now trees will grow huge right they will go to a certain height undergrowth are at a small height shrubs will be there shrubs bushes those are undergrowth so together when there are trees and undergrowth these will be these places will be called as forests okay so the meaning of forest is the large area of land covered with trees and undergrowth is called a forest area now we have to know what is the importance of forest in india what is the importance of forest in india now forest plays a very important role because for, from forest we get uh, so many different things we get wood to make furniture we get timber we get wood for fuel right then we get different uh, medicine medicinal shrubs for uh, ayurvedic medicine different medicinal shrubs we get we get fruits then animals get their shelter all these different things we get from the forest so you're very well aware of all the importance of the forest i don't have to explain that to you right the importance of forest you're well aware of that now because you're in 10 standard this is a very basic thing importance of forest so uh, that's why forest is so so important to us now in this chapter we're going to learn about the different types of forests present in india and each of their importance so first of all we're going to learn here types of forest now india mainly has six types of forest how many types in forest also there are types right india has six types of forest we learn about each type one by one in detail so the first type of forest here is the tropical evergreen forest tropical evergreen forest tropical evergreen forest now what is the speciality of this forest why do we call it evergreen forest see tropical evergreen forest is found in an area where the rainfall is more than 250 centimeters highest rainfall right rainfall more than 250 centimeters more plus more than that you see rainfall in those area you see tropical evergreen forest will be there now these tropical evergreen forests they are present in the areas receiving high rainfall for example the western ghats the assam meghalaya andaman nicobar island all these places which receive more than 250 centimeters of rainfall they have this tropical evergreen forest tropical evergreen forest is called evergreen because these forests in that the trees are never going to shed their leaves you know what is the meaning of shedding the leaves the leaves will fall right they will become brown in color and they will fall that will not happen in the tropical evergreen forest the leaves are not going to the trees are not going to shed their leaves in the tropical evergreen forest that is the speciality of this forest it's always green in color because the leaves are never going to become brown and they're never going to fall okay and that's why it is always green in color trees don't shed their leaves important feature don't shed leaves right that's the important feature now which are the different places where you find this forest in western ghat then western ghat is an area of more rainfall right then assam assam receives heaviest rainfall from the bay of bengal similarly meghalaya also meghalaya and andaman and nicobar island tripura all these places i have written just few there are many given in your textbook so these are the places where you are going to find tropical evergreen forest i wrote one speciality of this forest that trees will never shed their leaves also this uh, the the area where the tropical evergreen forest is present is going to have more than 250 centimeters of rainfall every year 
Apart from that, let us learn about some trees that are present in the tropical evergreen forest, some important trees. They are teak. Now, teak is a hardwood tree and it is used to make furniture. So, mostly hardwood trees are going to be found in this evergreen forest whose wood is very hard. Teak, rosewood, ebony, mahogany, these are the trees which have hardwood. So, hardwood trees are found usually in the tropical evergreen forest. Some examples of the trees are... Teak, rosewood, ebony, mahogany, mahogany we say in normal words, right? Mahogany, champa, etc. So under each forest, you have to remember this much points. I am going to give you notes in the form of question answers. But if you remember these points, you can answer any question for a board exam. Okay. Just take down. You can just pause the video. Take down the points. Okay. Anytime. So, tropical evergreen forest. Under that, you have to remember this many points. You have to remember that here the rainfall is more than 250 centimeters. The trees will never shed their leaves. Also, the different places where it is found and the different type of trees that are found here in tropical evergreen forest. This is all about tropical evergreen forest here. Let's move forward to the next type of forest in India out of the six this is the second type here which is tropical deciduous forest deciduous okay tropical deciduous forest See the spelling very properly. Tropical. D E C I. This is C I D U O U S. Tropical deciduous forest. Now, what is the uh, speciality of this forest? One by one, we learn. Like this, only we'll compare the points. First point about rainfall. So, how much rainfall is seen in tropical deciduous forest? This forest are found in the areas which are having rainfall between 100 centimeters to 200 centimeters. 100 centimeters to 200 centimeters of rainfall. In these areas only you are going to find tropical deciduous forest. So wherever the rainfall is between 100 to 200 centimeters, tropical deciduous forest will be present. Now also these forests, one speciality of this forest, if you compare, the evergreen forest does not shed their leaves, right? But the tropical deciduous forest, usually they will shed their leaves in spring and during summer. During some, Just before summer season and spring season, they are going to shed their leaves. They are going to become the leaves are going to become brown in color and they're going to fall okay so they shed their leaves trees shed their leaves that is a basic difference here between these two Here, the trees are going to shed their leaves in tropical deciduous forest, whereas the trees in evergreen forest are never going to shed their leaves. So, basic importance here. And this is one, like, like this you have to compare and study. When you compare and study, you, know, you always remember better. Okay. So, anytime you can pause the video and take down these notes. I am just reminding you. What are the other importance of tropical deciduous forest? Again, let us learn the different places where this forest is found. It is found in... The western ghats, the eastern slopes, eastern slopes are going to receive less rainfall. Also, it is found in Maharashtra, Karnataka, in your own in your own state, you have tropical deciduous forest. Maharashtra, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Chota Nagpur Plateau, hills of Himalaya, parts of Odisha and West Bengal. Okay, so that's why these uh, forests are present in the areas receiving 100 to 200 centimeters of rainfall. So, which are the areas here? I'll just write the important one which you can remember. Karnataka is an area. Then you can also remember Maharashtra, right? Maharashtra. What else? Karnataka, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Kerala. Tamil Nadu, T and I have written, but you write full form, please. Also, Kerala. Then, Chota Nagpur Plateau. Uh, okay, Odisha, alright. So, these are important places. You can easily remember them, etc. 
So here, these are the places where you find the tropical deciduous forest. Okay, in these places in Karnataka, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Odisha, you're going to find tropical deciduous deciduous forest. So let's move forward and talk about the different trees that are found here. Different trees that you find here is you find teak here also. Teak tree which you find in evergreen forest you find here also. You can find teak, sal, sandalwood important tree that is found in tropical deciduous forest. Sandalwood okay and uh, kanju then mango trees, neem trees, tamarind trees these are the common trees which are found in tropical deciduous forest. So let me write down to you the common names here. Teak, sal, sandalwood, then okay, mango trees, neem trees, tamarind trees, etc. So these are the different trees that you find here in tropical deciduous forest. See, if you don't know the names of, see mango tree is common, you know what is mango tree, you know what is neem. Tamarind is imli, what we say in Hindi, that tree is called tamarind tree. Now, if you're not aware of the other names though, you just have to go open the Google, type the names, see the pictures and you will understand which kind of tree they are talking about. So, in maybe in your regional language, the name for these trees are different, okay. So, you just have to Google and you will remember easily. So, these are the four points that I've written here again. Uh, under each type of forest, I have written four points. That is, how much rainfall, uh, whether they shed their leaves or they don't shed their leaves, and if the particular important characteristics of it. Then we learned about the different regions where they are found and the different type of trees that are found in these forests. Okay, so these are the two important types of forest found here in India. Let's move forward and talk about the third type, which is shrub forest and grassland. Scrub and grassland. So, scrub and grassland forest. Okay. So, this forest is found in an area which is having rainfall between 60 centimeters to a good 100 centimeters. So, areas which is having 60 to 100. See, this place is not going to have very tall trees. Now, a teak or sal or sandalwood or mangoes, these are tall trees, right? But here, shrubs and grassland forests are not going to have tall trees. They're going to have some scrubs, like just bushes, okay? Not very tall. Understand the difference? They're not very tall. So, tall trees are not going to be present here. Grassland, meaning only grass will be there and no huge trees will be there in this particular region. So, those are called... Um, scrub and grassland trees. So what kind of trees do you found here? You find here different kind of grass, thorny trees, bushes, etc. And where are these trees found? Which are the regions that you found here? Mostly in the desert region, right? Thar desert, then Rajasthan, Punjab, and some parts of Coromandel Hill. So wherever there is less rainfall, there you find the scrub and grassland. See, where do you find them? You find them in Thar desert, Right? Then also in Rajasthan, you also find them in Punjab, etc. And what kind of trees do you find here? In this kind of forest, what kind of trees do you find here? You find grass, thorny bushes which have thorn, Thorny trees and grass uh, and uh, thorny bushes and okay. So these are the trees that are found here in this particular uh, scrub and grassland forest. The, how much rainfall is there in this kind of forest? 60 to 100 centimeters of rainfall. And it is mostly found in the regions of Thar Desert, Rajasthan, Punjab, etc. Different kind of trees that grow here are grass, thorny trees and bushes. These will be growing here. So let's move forward and talk about the next important. See the first two are very important that is tro tropical evergreen and deciduous. Others are 
uh, only small part of India has these kind of forests, so there is no much detail about it. Okay, let's move forward and talk about the next that is desert vegetation. Desert vegetation. Okay, so where is desert vegetation found? It is found in minimum rainfall areas. There is 10 to 50 centimeters of rainfall. So wherever you see 10 to 50 centimeters, 10 centimeters to 50 centimeters of rainfall, in those areas easily you are going to find the desert vegetation. Now you already know which are the different places which have desert vegetation. Desert areas, Thar desert, Rajasthan desert, Punjab, Haryana, Igdam, completely where there is minimum rainfall in those regions, regions of minimum rainfall are going to have this desert uh, forest. So what kind of trees are found here in this desert vegetation? You hardly find one or two trees here, okay? Hardly one or two trees and mostly thorny bushes will be there. Usually what kind of trees will be growing here, you know? Uh, the bubble tree, the cactus and the khejra trees. These are the basic trees which are going to grow in this forest. So which are the regions which are going to have this forest? Thar desert, also uh, Punjab, Rajasthan, okay, Punjab and Rajasthan, okay, so let's write here only the trees that are found here, you find care tree, you, you might not be very familiar with these names because these trees are not going to grow here, right? They are going to grow only in the desert region. So here you will not see these trees. Babul tree, cacti, meaning cactus. The pruller of cactus is cacti or cacti you can say it. And khejra trees. So these are the different trees that are going to grow in the desert vegetation. Okay, desert vegetation is going to have 50 to, sorry, 10 to 50 centimeters of rainfall. And these regions are present mostly in the Thar Desert, in Punjab and Rajasthan areas. The different trees that grow here are the Khair tree, the Babul tree, the Cacti and the Khejra tree. Now let's move forward and learn about the fifth type of forest that is the mountain forest. Mountain forest, okay. The mountain forest is the place on the mountains where the trees and plants are growing on the slope. When the trees and plants are growing on the slope of the mountain, they are called the mountain forest. Growing where? On the slope of the mountains. Mountain will have a slope, right? So on the slope of the mountain when they are growing, they are called mountain forest okay so different type of trees will be growing here like oak tree chestnut tree beech tree pine tree cedar tree fir tree so these are the walnut trees these are the different trees growing here in this forest okay and because this forest is at higher altitude because mountains are at height right so on this height these trees will be growing that is the speciality of this tree they will be growing at higher altitude and the different places they are found here is himalayas Himalaya is a mountain, right? Himalayas and Nilgiri Hill. Nilgiri Hill, etc. What kind of trees will be growing in this kind of forest? You will have different trees like oak tree. Then you have chestnut tree. Then you, okay, and UT nut. Then you also have pine tree. I'm just writing the familiar names. Pine is familiar to you, fir is familiar to you and also walnut is familiar to you. So these kind of trees will be growing here in this mountain forest. Okay, this is the fifth type of forest. The last and the sixth type of forest here is the mangrove forest. Mangrove forest. This is the last type of forest here, which is the mangrove forest. 
Now these forests are found in wet areas, marshy areas near the uh, near the rivers and all. You know, it is very wet, right? So in these wet places, this mangrove forest will be growing. In wet and marshy areas, they will be growing along the deltas. Okay, in wet marshy areas. of rivers this mangrove forest will be growing so which are the different places which have the mangrove forest in india uh, mainly they are found in the rivers near the rivers okay so wherever there are huge rivers and all no on the deltas of the rivers they are found and which different trees will be growing here in this kind of forest they will be canes rhizophora you must have studied in science about rhizophora then canes then uh, screw pine palm and sundari leaves these trees will be growing here rhizophora apart from rhizophora canes pines and sundari these are the trees that grow mostly in the mangrove forest okay so these are the different six types of forest that you learned here in this lesson now let's learn about how much of india is covered in forest see totally 7.74 lakh kilometers of india is covered in forest region how much 7.74 lakh kilometers that is equal to 23.6 percent of the total country's area 23.6 percent of the total country's area is covered in forest region but according to the uh, according to national forest policy of india uh, they had written a rule that india must have at least 33.3 percent forest but we don't have 33.3 percent we have 23.6 percent of forest in india maximum forest is found in the madhya pradesh region and minimum forest is found in goa so maximum forest is found in madhya pradesh and minimum is in goa so next important thing that we are going to learn here is about conservation of forest conservation meaning protecting or saving conservation of forest that is protecting and saving of forest so what do you mean by conservation of forest now forest is a very important thing for india right we get so many things from the forest we get trees we get a uh, fodder for the plants we get furniture okay, all these things we get from forest so that's why it is very important to us but the forest in india is going on decreasing because human because of human activities human being are going on cutting down the forest for their own needs what needs do human being have they want to carry on urban organization they need more and more places to build their houses right they want more and more places to build their houses that is called urbanization also industrialization that is they want to make more and more industries that is industrialization so because of all this region all these things the forest is going on becoming less and less and we have to try our best to conserve this forest so what are the different things we can do to conserve our forest nine points okay 10 points are given in your textbook about measures for conservation of forest very 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 important question for exam point of view what are the different measures to conserve the forest in india okay keep in mind very very important question out of the 10 at least remember any eight okay so very very important this is first point how we can conserve control deforestation deforestation is nothing but the cutting down of the trees cutting down of the trees for our own need is called deforestation so main thing that we have to do is we have to control deforestation we have to stop deforestation next is restriction on grazing grazing meaning when the animals are eating the grass that is called grazing and we have to restrict the grazing we have to keep grazing in control which is very very important restriction on grazing okay we should not allow the animals to eat the grass completely some grass should be left there next control of forest fires forest fire is a common thing right suddenly the forest when they are dry 
they will catch fire especially deciduous forest grasslands desert vegetation when the when there is no uh, especially in summer season when there is very hot sun suddenly the forest will catch fire there and forest fires are very difficult to control but we have to control them because forest fires take away most of the vegetation of the country next is prevention of encroachment of forest what do you mean by encroachment encroachment meaning hun hunting is another word for encroachment okay people will come and cut down the trees or rob the trees from the forest see sandalwood uh teak wood these are important trees these are expensive trees so people usually come and rob these trees there so this this should be prevented and encroachment should be prevented next is control of forest insects and diseases so diseases that are spread because of forest that also should be controlled controlling illegal cutting of trees as i told you teak sal sandalwood these are important trees expensive trees so illegally people will try to cut these trees that should be controlled scientific cutting of trees scientific cutting of trees meaning what scientific cutting of trees means that trees should be cut in a planned manner if you want to cut trees you should if you are cutting one tree uh, in that place you have to plant another two or three trees that is called scientific cutting if you are making if you are removing one tree you should plant some there okay that method should be followed legislation to check forest deforestation legislation meaning law laws and rules should be written and these laws and rules should check on deforestation they should see that deforestation is not taking place encouraging afforestation encouraging people to plant more and more trees another very important fact here is afforestation okay that should be encouraged next important point creating awareness among the people about the importance of forest you should tell the people about all the importance of forest you should make them realize that cutting of forest is not good for us only it is it is harmful for human being only cutting of forest is harmful for human being itself and human being should not cut the forest you should teach this this knowledge should reach every person of india that is important education they should get about the importance of forest okay now you are in 10th standard you are getting education about the importance of forest in this chapter you are getting education about importance of forest what is your duty your duty is to explain to your parents your relatives your neighbors if they are involved in any deforestation activity you should explain to them about the importance of forest right that is why you are getting education that is why you are called educated person right so let's move forward here and talk about the different centuries or wildlife centuries we have in india wildlife centuries and national park so wildlife century and national park are these are basically places where the uh, plants and animals will be protected the plants and animals of this region will be protected okay wildlife century provides protection to the wild life only only to the plants and anim only to the animals it protect it gives uh, protection a zoo is different zoo is you put the animal in the cage wildlife century is you leave them open only they will be in open area only you just put a boundary nearby the area and any visitor can come and visit there okay so that is the difference they are free there in zoo they are not free in zoo they are behind the jail right okay so different wildlife centuries are there in india their names are given here there is one in tamil nadu which is called anamalai and mudumalai then there is dandeli wildlife century bandra wildlife century Talakaveri Wildlife Sanctuary, BR Hills in Karnataka, and Periyar in Kerala, and many more are written here. And you have to at least remember five of these wildlife sanctuaries. Okay, national park are basically the whole area, including the animals and the trees, also will be protected. No person is allowed to come there and cut the trees or anything. Those are called national uh, parks. Okay, so those areas will be called national park. And next. biosphere reserve is nothing but here in this biosphere reserve the human the uh, man women living in that particular area will also be given protection and some kind of importance
So these are the different things that you learned here in this chapter today about the different six kind of forests found in India and in detail about each forest and the importance of forest, conservation of forest, what you can do to conserve forest and also you learned about wildlife sanctuaries, national park okay, and biosphere reserves. So with this I ended the fifth chapter India forest resources. Thank you so much for watching class. Have a nice day.